G'day everyone. Today I have made a spontaneous decision just to come up to Lake William Hovel for the afternoon. It is a glorious midwinter day and I just couldn't possibly spend it indoors. I haven't done much fishing lately. I don't know how I'm going to go this afternoon. But Lake William Hovel is a small lake of around 13,500 megalitres. To put that into perspective, with last week's rainfall, which was not even a flooding rainfall event, with last week's steady rain, Lake William Hovel has jumped from around 50% up to being around about 85 to 90 percent now it fills very quickly lake william hovel has a fantastic population of natural recruiting trout mostly brown trout and a few other rainbow trout and now the trout season's closed however the lakes such as lake william hovel are still open so this gives me an opportunity to come and wet a line during the closed trout season there's also a population of redfin in here as well which are caught mostly during the warmer months so today i've come up here I'm going to do a bit of photography. I've got my Canon G7X Mark II sitting on the grass down here taking a time lapse right now as I speak. And then a bit later on, I'm going to cast a few lures around to see if I can pick up the elusive Lake William Hovel trout. I will do anything just to get you back again. I would do anything at all. The Slater's Creek. <laughs> I've just realised I'm only in two wheel drive. I got out and locked my hubs in but forgot to uh, put the gear stick into four wheel drive. <laughs> The back end of the car's slipping around a bit. <laughs> Can I make it up this slippery bit in two-wheel drive? Oh, I'm sliding everywhere. <laughs> now I'm right. It's slippery, but there's a lot of big rocks in here that have uh, helped me slide. The back of the car's still sliding around a bit, but nothing too bad. What I'll do, I'll reach down here. Now a little green light just came on. I'm now in high four. High range four wheel drive. You see that big stick on the road? I just picked that up driving through all them puddles. I picked up a hitchhiker, as I like to call it. Quite often, rather than getting out from your car and laying in the mud and reaching up underneath, quite often you can just put the four-wheel drive in reverse, drive backwards, and they'll all just unhook themselves, which is what's happened there. Evans Creek. Shit, it's looking a bit rough on the other side. Which way will I go? I'm go this way, I reckon. Probably looks the best. I might just stick in the low range. Putting it in low range four wheel drive, and the reason for that, just so that I can crawl up nice and slowly. If I leave it in high range, I've got to go a bit quicker and it bounces around, and I've got quite a lot of money with the camera gear sitting on the chair beside me, so put it in low range just so that I can go nice and slow. Now I'm back in high range. How nice is this? This is the top end of Lake William Hovel. That's the King River that runs around there. And this is Evans Creek running into Lake William Hovel right here. You can see this is all backed up by the lake. We're at the very top end of the lake here now. I can actually see rabbits running around over there. You can see by all the green grass under the water here how quickly this lake has risen in the last few weeks. 
What a beautiful place. So right now it looks like I'm fishing in a river or a creek, but I'm actually not because the season's closed. I'm fishing in the lake, but it's where a creek runs into the lake. Look at how clear that water is. Despite all the rain we've just had, I can easily see three to four meters into the water there, probably more. Absolutely amazing. Gotta love this place. Absolutely love this place. I wonder if there's any trout sitting up there and waiting for food to wash in out of the creek. Wow, that water is so clear. I'll tell you what, it's always a good idea to have a car that you don't like very much when you're going into places like this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This is another one of those low range jobs for that reason. Bang! Look at these rocks. You're probably noticing <laughs> notice that I'm driving with one hand, which probably isn't ideal. But I've got $4,000 worth of the camera gear sitting on the seat beside me. I don't want it bouncing off and smashing on the floor. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now yeah, I'm back to the dodgy creek crossing. Oh, I'm in. Rightio, now I've come down to the main body of the lake. I've been here for around two hours and so far I've only fished for about five or ten minutes. I haven't been taking it very seriously. I've been doing a lot of four-wheel driving, taking a few photos, testing a couple of lenses, testing a few lures. I was going to go to a spot just up there at the other end of the lake, but when I drove in there, there was somebody already there. So I've decided to come down here to the main body of the lake. Sunset or late in the afternoon is the best time to catch a trout at Lake William Hovel. Got him. What have I got? Something really small. A little trout or a little redfin? I'll be bugging. A little weeny brown trout. Oh, he got off. I went, I went to wet my hand and he got off. A tiny little weeny brown trout. Oh, that's a touch. And again, and again. Got him. Look at that tiny little brown trout. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Lake William Hovel hasn't been stocked. Now this trout is not fin clipped, so he's not a fin clipped fish. Sorry mate, let me get the hook out. There he goes. I've never known Lake William Hovel to get stocked with trout, and yet for some reason, right here in front of me at the moment, they are heaps and heaps and heaps of brown trout around three inches long. I've got one following my lure now. Got it, you, you hit it. I know I'm not innocent. You just 
deserve a better man But let me just hold your hand once more Rightio, folks, that is it for me. I've had a fantastic afternoon up here at Lake William Hovel. In hindsight, I didn't actually do a lot of fishing. I spent a lot of time four-wheel driving, crashing through the bush. I tried a few different lures, done a bit of product testing, but I had a fantastic afternoon. Now, one thing I have noticed that there seems to be a lot of little weenie brown trout around four or five inches long in the lake at the moment. Honest to God, I do not know whether they've been stocked or whether they've just naturally recruited, but for whatever reason, there's quite a lot of them. It does appear that the lake has been stocked. In saying that, I've never heard of Lake William Hovel being stocked before. Anyway, for whatever reason, there's trout in the lake. They're only this big now, but as we head into springtime, they're going to be a bit bigger, and by next year, they'll be good-sized fish. This is fantastic, not only for the lake, but also for the tributaries upstream, including the King River. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you came here looking for a little bit of fishing excitement, you might be a little bit bored <laughs> because the only one fish I caught was that big and the one I lost was the same size. But this is heaven. This is beautiful. I love it up here. I love to come up here and places just like this just to get away. It is so quiet and peaceful. Just amazing. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell beside it so that you get a notification each time I upload a new video. No trip to Lake William Hovel would be complete without a hamburger from the Chess Hunt store.